Today we're going to consider the kinematics of a moving material region R0 in the reference state of the body B0 that moves and changes shape to become R in the current state of the body B. As before, we'll consider a point in the reference state with position vector capital X, but now we'll also consider a point that's a small distance delta big X away, and we'll imagine what happens to this vector as the material moves and deforms so that delta big X in the reference state becomes delta little x in the current state of the body. So the reference coordinates are components of the position vector capital X. And the Lagrangian or material description of this motion is little x equals little x of big X and T. The current or deformed coordinates are components xi of the position vector little x. And the Eulerian or spatial description of this motion will be big X equals big X of little x and t. So now we can consider the transformation that takes delta big X to delta little x. Since delta big X and delta little x are vectors, then the transformation that turns delta big X into delta little x must be a tensor, and that tensor is F. F is known as the deformation gradient tensor. It's a rank two tensor, it's non-singular, and in general, it's not symmetric. Now, in the limit, as delta big X tends to zero, we can use the chain rule to relate the components of delta little xi to delta big xr by the partial derivative del xi del xr. Therefore, the components of the deformation gradient tensor, f i r, are the partial derivatives of the formed or current coordinates del little xr with respect to the underformed or reference coordinates del big xr. Let's try an example now. Given the Lagrangian description of the displacement field U in a body as the following, U1 equals alpha times X1 plus beta times big X2, U2 equals gamma times big X2, and U3 equals delta times big X3, where big X1, 2, and 3 are the original reference coordinates, what are the components of the deformation gradient tensor F? Are they A? F has components alpha, beta, zero, beta, gamma, zero, 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 delta. Or B, F has components alpha plus one, beta, zero, zero, gamma plus one, zero, 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 delta plus one. Or C, F has components alpha plus one, beta plus one, zero, zero, gamma plus one, zero, 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 delta. Or D, F has components alpha plus one, beta, zero, beta, gamma plus one, zero, zero, and delta plus one. Or E, none of the above. Okay, let's try and work it out. Well, U1 is X1 minus big X1, which means that little x1 is equal to alpha times big X1 plus big X1 plus beta times big X2, or alpha plus 1 times big X1 plus beta times big X2. 
So that's a Lagrangian description for the deformed coordinates. U2 is little x2 minus big x2. So little x2, the deformed coordinate, is gamma big x2 plus big x2, or gamma plus 1 times big x2. U3 is little x3 minus big x3. So the deformed x3 is equal to delta times big x3 plus big x3, or delta plus 1 times big x3. So now taking partial derivatives of each of these functions, little x1, 2, and 3, with respect to big x1, 2, and 3, we get del little x1 del big x1 equals alpha plus 1, del little x1 del big x2 equals beta, del little x1 del big x3 equals 0. This is the first row of the deformation gradient tensor. Del little x2 del big x1 is 0, del little x2 del big x2 is gamma plus 1, del little x2 del big x3 is 0. Del little x3 del big x1 is 0. Its derivative with respect to big x2 is 0, and its derivative with respect to big x3 is delta plus 1. So these are the components of the deformation gradient tensor, which you'll see appear in answer B. So B is the correct answer. Now, since displacement is little x minus big x, then the displacement gradients del ui del big xr equal del xi del big xr minus del big xi del big xr, which is fir minus delta ir. In other words, the displacement gradients, which are grad of u, and the capital G there is intentional to represent derivatives with respect to the reference coordinates, which we call g, is equal to f minus i. So g is the displacement gradient tensor. It's just the deformation gradient tensor minus the identity tensor. But it's the deformation gradient tensor that we'll use most. And that's thanks to the polar decomposition theorem. And the polar decomposition theorem states that for a matrix or tensor such as F that is square and non-singular, it can always be decomposed into the product of R, an orthogonal rotation, and U, a symmetric tensor, or alternatively, the product of the symmetric tensor V times R, the orthogonal rotation. So here, R is the orthogonal rotation tensor. It has the property that R transpose R equals I, or R R transpose equal I. And U is the symmetric right stretch tensor. So U is equal to U transpose. In the alternative form of the polar decomposition theorem, V, which is also symmetric, is called the left stretch tensor. So V equals V transpose. So the deformation gradient can also always be decomposed into a stretch and a rotation, because that's the two things that can happen to the vector. It can change its length, and it can change its orientation. Now, since the rotation could be a rigid body motion that could be indistinguishable from a change of observer, we really want to get rid of R. We're really interested in shape change. And shape change amounts to length change. So we want to find a tensor measure that preserves the stretch U, or V, but eliminates R. Now, U and V could be used, but the polar decomposition theorem is difficult to compute. So instead, what we do is we square up F and make use of the orthogonality of the rotation to eliminate it from the product. So we define the right Cauchy Green deformation tensor, is conventionally called C, by C equals F transpose F. F transpose would be R U all transpose times R U. 
And recall that the transpose of a product is the product of the transposes, but in the opposite order. So that gives us u transpose r transpose r u. But r transpose r is i, the identity tensor, which leaves us u transpose u. And since u is symmetric, that would be the same as u squared for short. In component notation, the components of C would be given by F I R F I S, which would leave C R S or del X I del X R del X I del X S. And notice that if we switch the orders of R and S, we get the same expression. So C is symmetric which we would expect because u is symmetric. And furthermore, notice that the indices of C are the capital letter referring to the components of the reference or underformed coordinates. So C, the right Cauchy-Green deformation tensor, is a Lagrangian quantity. Engineers like to define shape change or strain in a way such that when there's no shape or length change, the quantity is zero. Whereas if there's no stretch, u would be i and therefore c would be i. So to define the strain tensor, we subtract i from c. So this gives us e equals one half of c minus i which is known as the Lagrangian Green's strain tensor, or in component notation, its components are del xi, del xr, del xi, del xs, minus delta rs. You can see why we've subtracted i from c to get a quantity, a tensor that's zero when there's no strain or no shape change. The factor of one half comes from the fact that this expression is squared. What we'll see later is that the Lagrangian green strain tensor is really a measure of length squared change rather than length change. And that comes about from Pythagoras, namely length changes in multiple dimensions and two or three dimensions involve the square root of sums of squares. So in order to eliminate the rotation, we took F transpose F. That had the effect of squaring U and therefore the strain defined this way as a quadratic definition. And the one half there is so that when we do a Taylor series expansion and linearize, that will cancel. Let's try an example now. If the components of the deformation gradient tensor F are if I R equals lambda one zero zero, zero lambda two zero, zero zero lambda three. What are the components of the Lagrangian strain tensor E? So here are your choices. Try working that out with a pencil and paper. So let's work this out. E is one half of C minus I which is one half of F transpose F minus I. So doing the matrix operations, we get that the components of the green strain are one half times F transpose, which is the same as F up here because F is diagonal, times F minus the identity tensor. So this is a simple matrix multiplication. We get one half of lambda one squared, zero, 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 lambda two squared, zero, 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 lambda three squared minus i, which reduces to one half of lambda one squared minus one, zero, zero, lambda two squared minus one, zero, zero, 0 lambda 3 squared minus 1, which was choice C.
So similarly, we could also eliminate R from if by taking the product if if transpose instead of if transpose if. This now, instead of leaving u, leaves v, i.e. if if transpose equals vr times vr all transposed. And that's VR times R transpose V transpose. And again, we have R R transpose in the middle, which is I, the identity tensor, which leaves us V V transpose, or since V is symmetric, leaves us V squared. And this quantity is called V, the Eulerian left Cauchy Green deformation tensor. So, in the same way that we use C to define a Lagrangian strain tensor, we can use B to define an Eulerian strain tensor, which is known as the Almanzi strain tensor, which is sometimes denoted by eta. And eta is one half of I minus B inverse. So if we look at the components of B, there would be Bij equals Fir, if Rj, so that would be if if transpose. So notice this time it's the components that refer to the underformed reference coordinates that are summing, leaving us del xi, del xr, del xj, del xr. And notice that this expression is also symmetric in i and j, so bij equals bji, and this time the indices refer to the current or the formed coordinates. Writing out the strain tensor then in index notation, we get that eta ij is one half delta ij minus del xr, del, del xi, del xr, del xj, which is also symmetric. Let's work out the Almansi strain tensor components for the same deformation gradient tensor components as in the previous example. If the components of f are lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3 on the diagonal, what are the components of the Eulerian Almansi strain tensor eta? So here are your four choices this time A, B, C, and D. See if you can work that one out. Well, eta is one half of I minus B inverse, where B is FF transpose, so we get one half of I minus. If if transpose inverse. In index notation, this is a to ij equals one half of delta ij minus del xr del xi times del xr del xj, where these are the inverse of the deformation gradients. So this then gives us that the components of a to ij a one half of the identity tensor minus one over lambda one, one over lambda two, one over lambda three on the diagonal times one over lambda one, one over lambda two, and one over lambda three on the diagonal, which gives us one half of one minus one over lambda one squared, zero, zero, 0, 1 minus 1 over lambda 2 squared, 0, 0, 0, 1 minus 1 over lambda 3 squared, which was answer D. So we'll, in class, expand on these definitions, uh, manipulate them, and give some physical examples.